So welcome back to another exciting episode of LA Fish Guys. I'm real um, fortunate in the sense that I received a referral from my jellyfish tank customer for a woman who wants a living coral reef tank and she wants it in a cylinder tank. This is in a gated exclusive neighborhood and she's looking for a tank that is 36 inches in diameter and 42 inches tall. So this cylinder reef tank will be quite the challenge. One of the first things she requested right off the bat was that she wanted the app on her cell phone. Um, so that means I'm going to be bringing in Scott and we're going to be installing the Apex uh, Aquarium Controller. This will allow us to control and monitor a number of different aspects with regards to her aquarium and of course at the same time give her that app on her cell phone. In addition, I'm going to be bringing in our friend uh, Condi to do all that fancy rock work where we pin and drill it together. So it'll be a real spacious and unique type of uh, uh, rock structure within the tank. Today we're going to be placing some pipes in a trench because the filter system will be outside in the patio whereas obviously the tank is indoors. So come along with us as we start doing the prep work for the uh, fancy living coral reef cylinder tank. So we get here and the trench was not dug, at least not dug deep enough, so we got Jim over there digging away. I would much rather be operating the camera than the pickaxe, so better Jim than Can me. do! Okay, so Scott's goal was to try to dig down 18 inches and do the geothermal thing, but uh, apparently we ran into uh, storm drains or patio drains, and uh, with the use of the axe, he uh, broke through, so that'll have to be patched. Yeah, I broke through, they broke through when they initially dug Here's it. another one. There's another pipe here, and I think somewhere in here is another. Right under there. It's right buried. under there. So, uh, what is that, about 10, 12 inches? Uh, there's another one there, so that's the, the depth of the trench. And then we're going to uh, cut the flexible tubing here in 25 foot lengths. And we're going to bury four lengths in the trench. Two will be used for um, the in and the out for uh, drainage out of the tank and return from the pump back to the tank. The third will be for the uh, cables for the apex. And then the fourth was requested on the part of the homeowner as partially a backup and who knows what else. Uh, there might be one other issue and we're looking for the uh, electrician because he may want to put some uh, conduit and pipe in there for us because we're going to need power. So right here is where the, uh, the box will go. It'll match the wall there. And uh, the box will hold the chiller, the filter, the protein skimmer, uh, some of the electronics, the water pump, the UV sterilizer, etc. Because um, this side here is going to be where the filter saw compartment is, so we want to make sure we have enough extra line here to, to get into the top of the compartment. Um, and on the other side over here, I want to make sure that we got enough extra line here to get to our strands on the bottom of the tank. So. So you're uh, marking those pipes? Yep. And that's pipe number one. And it'll have a corresponding end inside the house. That is the plan. And that's the end of pipe number one there, right? Right. Make sure it is on your end. The inside one. Can you hear me? 
or he's not playing along. So put your ear to it, I dare ya. <laughs> hey! <laughs> That's pipe number one. Okay, so the uh, plumbing is trenched. There's two lines there and another two lines here one of which will be the uh, in and the out one of which is a uh, line for uh, the apex system and one of which I believe is a uh, simply just a backup and they pass along under the entrance over to uh, inside of the house where uh, all four lines come up and hopefully the cement gets poured so they uh, poke out properly. So, good job. Okay, so Condi has arrived with our live rock. Um, this is a container rock that came from the fish wholesalers. He's gone through and picked out a number of boxes of pieces that he liked. Uh, what we're going to do is um, have you hosed this off already, or no. it needs to be hosed off? It needs to be hosed off. Okay, so we got to clean off uh, whatever debris and loss of life that uh, have occurred on the rock. And then we're going to, um, in advance, kind of create the rock work sculpture uh, in sections. Uh, and then ultimately we'll end up um, putting it in a container or tub that I've purchased um, to try to cure it a little bit before it goes into the... Uh, customer's tank and that installation is uh, about two weeks away. So the first thing we've done is we've uh, drawn the footprint of the aquarium uh, in the driveway. The tank is a cylinder tank and it's 36 inches in diameter. Of those two blue rings, it's the inner blue ring and it has a 8x8 um, eight eight overflow uh, that we decided to put into the back of the tank. Uh, you would think a cylinder tank you might want it in the center uh, but this tank the back of it will go up against the uh, corner of a wall uh, an outside corner as opposed to an inside corner and by moving the overflow to the back of the tank it opens up the tank uh, thus allowing for what I think is a much fuller view of a potential reef. Uh, the downside to having that overflow in the center would be um, we would only have 18 inches, say 12 inches on each side of the overflow to put rock and not only would that be difficult to get in there to uh, put the rock in but just as difficult to place corals in whereas now uh, the rake or angle of the rock will go from the bottom corner at an angle upward so it'll make um, again for a fuller uh, looking reef an easier uh, reef to place corals in and something I think is going to hold a lot more corals and in my opinion look a lot more attractive as opposed to a um, what I'll call a Norwegian pine tree. Um, so the box will serve as the uh, uh, overflow and we have a footprint here uh, that will determine how we're going to do the rock. So it appears as though what we'll do is begin to select pieces of rock uh, using the drill and the pins and begin to assemble uh, the rock formation uh, ultimately in four or five, maybe six sections. Uh, and then we can uh, disassemble it and um, put it into the container or the tub in the garage and begin to cure it in advance before we end up uh, going out to the customer's house. So with all the pieces of rock out of seven boxes of live rock scattered about, it gives him an idea as to what he has to work with. So he'll begin to slowly decide which pieces form the base or the foundation and then uh, begin to kind of build upon there. Are you ready for the coolest jellyfish system ever? It's not a bowl and it's not a box. It's a circulation device and it allows you to build your own individual customized jellyfish aquarium system. This new circulation device allows you to convert almost anyone's equally sided tank into a jellyfish system. 
introducing a uniquely innovative concept from the originator of the home hobbyist jellyfish system, the Jelly Aquarium 360. Jim Stein, the pioneer of jellyfish tanks, now offers the Jelly Aquarium 360. Why 360? Because it's designed for a tank you can walk around or view from all sides. The 360 fits into the top of a hexagon, a cube, or a cylinder tank. It produces a three-dimensional water flow that gently rotates jellyfish in a geometric 3D circular donut-shaped flow pattern. The new Jelly Aquarium 360 was designed using 3D software and is state-of-the-art 3D printed. And best of all, it's proudly made in America. Four sizes are available plus an entire line of standard acrylic aquariums, stands, and canopies ranging from hexagon to cubes to the awesome-looking cylinders. Welcome to the newest in jellyfish keeping. Meet the next challenge. Visit JellyAquarium360.com for more information. When you think of Tunzi products, you probably think of protein skimmers, internal pumps, and submersible filters. But did you know? Tunzi also offers water level controllers, reverse osmosis water purification systems, pH, temperature, and ORP instrumentation. Are you aware of Tunzi's full line of various filter medias and LED lighting? Have you seen Tunzi's updated line of Turbell pumps, the Nano Stream, the Stream, and the Master Stream, along with their controllers? In addition to their wide product line, what Tunzi in Germany wants you to also see is their technology, their quality, their craftsmanship, and in particular, their people and the pride that goes into every one of their products and its assembly. Tunzi, high-tech aquarium ecology. Hi, Jim Stein here with Aquarium Design. I sure hope you're enjoying the show. Just a little inside information. When I met with the customer originally to discuss what it was she wanted, she told me she wanted a cylinder tank and she wanted a living coral reef. Well, I knew right away I needed to bring in my friend Condi to help out with that live rock sculpture. The second thing she said to me was, and I want the app on my phone. Well, I knew right there I needed to bring in my friend Scott Leaf and that we were going to be installing the Neptune Systems Apex Aquarium Controller. Here's some information on their most updated version. The design of the outside of the Apex was just as important to us as what we did on the inside. So the new mounting system lets the Apex flip up and you can easily see where all the cables go. It then drops back down to keep stray water from entering the electronics. Underneath are many of the same connectors found on the previous Apex, things like switch inputs and your variable speed ports, and even Aquabus, so all of your existing modules and accessories will work with this Apex. We've also added salinity monitoring as well. And of course, for monitoring the health of your aquarium, there are the connectors for pH, ORP, temperature, and there's even a connector for 12 volt input for power outage situations. So it's actually quite amazing how many things we put into this new Apex to monitor the health of your aquarium and to control everything that you need to control. But what we really did was listen to all of the customer feedback and put some things in there like Wi-Fi. So now you have Wi-Fi if you want to use it or you can use a wired connection. One touch 
uh, firmware updates. We now call it the Apex Operating System, and with one touch on your mobile device, you can update it. With the Energy Bar 832, you can see how much power each and every device on your aquarium is using. You can then monitor that for a day, make some changes to say your lighting schedule or your temperature, and see how it changes the next day. The Energy Bar 832 has three built-in one-link ports. This means you can connect up with one cable our wave pumps, the dose to dose elements in your aquarium, and future products that we'll come out with. On the new energy bar, there are indicator lights that show you when each and every outlet is on or off, and they also will blink if you happen to be pulling too much current on any one outlet so that you don't overload a circuit. We know that tens of thousands of aquarists around the world count on the Apex as a critical component to their successful aquariums. This new Apex gives us the platform to continue innovating for our customers so that they can be more successful with less hassle. So the rock master is uh, starting to create his uh, sculpture. Apparently he has the uh, first two pieces drilled and pinned together. And we're uh, making adjustments as we speak. This is where the uh, our creative artisticness comes in and a little bit of vision as to what it is we're looking for. So one of the things that will be included into this tank will be four Tunzi internal pumps and they will be attached to the internal overflow and they are um, 13 inches, 13 and a half inches up from the bottom and another 13 and a half inches up and then there'll be another set of holes at the top of the overflow, which is where the returns from the pump will enter. But these lower sets of uh, holes are where bulkheads will go, and those will serve not only as the passage for the power cord for the Tunzi pumps to pass into the internal overflow, they'll also be the um, anchor points uh, where the Tunzis will attach to the overflow. So that being said, what I now need to do is mark on our... Um, pseudo internal overflow where those points will be so that as he constructs the rock uh, he'll be able to kind of work around them. So I've marked on the sides of the boxes where those bulkheads for the Tunzi pumps will be. There's nothing on this side. Nothing on the front. Uh, so it'll be two on either side of the overflow and at the top of the overflow will be the two uh, returns. So as the magic man continues to uh, work his craft uh, we've got the beginnings of a fairly interesting looking uh, rock work sculpture for uh, the upcoming cylinder tank. We've still got another twice as high to go on it but um, uh, there's all kinds of places to position corals, lots of nooks and crannies and passages for fish to uh, swim in amongst through. So it's uh, starting to uh, come together. So in addition to drilling holes through the rocks, he then cuts a pin that he can use to connect different rocks together. And this particular one, what I watched him do, was to drill, he placed that rock in there, drilled through it all the way into the rock below it, and then removed the rock in his hand, finished drilling the hole in the rock underneath it, placed a pin in the rock underneath it, and now this rock, he slides over that pin so that it's... Uh, securely uh, held. At least that's the hope. But the unique thing is, there you go, you get all these rocks that are overhanging and leaning out and um, creating ledges and extensions and that it uh, gives it quite a, a unique um, 
uh, varied overhanging structure. So as the day passes and starts becoming night, Condi progresses to a sculpture that's about 30 inches tall now. And as a perfectionist, he's still sculpting pieces to fit into a few more spots. So we've now filled up a container of salt water that's being pumped into a uh, pressure washer and Condi is now pressure washing off the rock sculpture itself trying to get rid of any of the uh, loose, dying or dead debris. To clean the live rock we need to use salt water and not only is it sometimes hard to get the pump itself primed, one has to thoroughly flush the pressure washer of salt water when done as it can easily corrode the insides of the pressure washer. Running into a little bit of a priming issue, I think. So now with the uh, sculpture pressure washed, the next challenge is to disassemble it. And from there, it'll be moved over into this large 140 gallon tub that uh, we'll end up putting that protein skimmer on. Um, this is um, about six foot by 30 some inches wide by almost 30 inches tall so we'll put the live rock in here in sections fill it with salt water add the protein skimmer and um, probably some pumps uh, to move that water around in a attempt to try to cure the rock thus again minimizing the amount of debris or death or such that's uh, still on the rock so we'll start uh, disassembling it now Okay, I need you to grab one side. And one <laughs> and we're uh, carry it as one piece. Yeah. So as Condi disassembles the sculpture, one has to assume that he knows how to put it back together the same way. Okay. So as he disassembles it, what he's told me is he's trying to basically memorize how the pieces came apart because after the curing process we have to uh, load them up into the truck that night and uh, he's going to try to reassemble it in a way that he can remember how it all goes back together. I guess that's a good reason why I took all those pictures today, huh? So I've uh, got salt water made up here in the mixing container and that is now being pumped over into the tub and we'll fill this tub up with salt water and again the intent will be to allow the rock to soak uh, and cure uh, to try to remove as much of the uh, death, uh, debris, possibly nutrients We'll get that protein skimmer hooked up in a moment, and uh, it'll sit right over there, and that should help get rid of some of it. I need to come up with some pumps. Uh, there's some Rio pumps over there that I'll use to help circulate water in here. Um, so that's the next step. 
um, as I fill up the tank or the tub. So it's filling up. We've got some additional pumps that we're putting in, um, trying to get some circulation going. I try to get it underwater, it'll work a little bit better. <laughs> um, Now we still want to get that protein skimmer set up over there. All right, so the protein skimmer is hooked up. It's a little over aerating at the moment, but it's also a new skimmer, so it needs to break itself in. We've got the rock curing in the container, and there's pumps in there that are moving the water around. So we've got the uh, sculpture uh, done and uh, cooking as we'll call it. So make it a point to come on back for the next part of this episode. Until then, keep moving forward. <laughs>